Behold, here we have the fastest four-seater convertible. This thing is capable of up to 207 miles an hour. The Bentley Continental GT convertible is the quickest and most expensive way to blow dry your hair. Now in this video, I'm gonna tell you all about this luxury good, which is basically like a can of caviar on wheels. Obviously, it's an open can, isn't it? Ha 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 ha. Now, I'm gonna to have to start this video by talking about something rather vulgar. No, not that, I'm talking about price. You see, this thing starts from 169,000 pounds. That's for this V8 version. If you want the W12, that kicks off at 182,000 pounds. Let's talk about engines. So that W12 has a six liter, 12 cylinder twin turbo with 635 horsepower and 900 newton meters of torque. That can do not 60 in 3.7 seconds and has a top speed of 207 miles an hour. This is the V8 version, so this has a four litre twin turbo V8. It's got 550 horsepower and 770 newton meters of torque, and its top speed is just 198 miles an hour. I mean, oh God, that, that's just so crap. It's jokes, British sarcasm. It's a British car. Bentley says this V8 version of the Continental convertible should be able to do not 60 in four seconds. Now the engine is actually from Porsche, so is the gearbox. It's an eight speed dual clutch with launch control. So it should get close to those numbers, but I'll be finding out myself with this, my specialist timing gear. So let's do it. I've got the car in its sports mode for the gearbox and the engine. So let's do it. Left foot on the brake, floor the throttle, all the revs, and now I'm gonna release the brake. Here we go. Woohoo! <laughs> this seems as rude. <laughs> As well past 60. Not 60, 3.8 seconds. It's incredible. And the W12 is going to be even quicker. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to the largest brakes fitted as standard to a production vehicle. So you've got 420 millimeter discs at the front, 380 at the back. You've got 10 pistons in those calipers. There's four pistons at the rear. And the brakes at the front have a two metal design. So the central hub is aluminum. That helps keep the weight down. But of course, you've got an iron disc. It's plenty of stopping power, but you need it with something this heavy and this quick. Now let's see just how good these brakes are at stopping this car, which comes in at almost two and a half tons. So once again, I'm gonna use my specialist timing gear. I'm gonna do a brake test from 70 miles an hour, see how long it takes to stop. When I reach the cone that's lying down, I'm gonna do a full emergency stop. The one after it is actually 50 meters away. Hopefully I'll stop before then, but who knows, might not be able to. Let's find out. Here we go. I'm gonna left or brake it. Here's the 70, here we go. Do you know what? I was actually a bit late on my braking for all that left foot braking shenanigans. I almost passed the cone. But what did it actually do? What does the data say? It stopped from 70 miles an hour in 44.8 meters, which is incredible for a car of this size. In fact, it's a shorter distance than I did it in a performance car. This Bentley has an intelligent four wheel drive system. What that means is that when the going gets a bit slippery, it can send up to 38% of the engine's power to the front wheels to help scrub you out of a corner. However, through normal driving, it's more rear drive bias and it can send up to 83% of the engine's power to the rear wheels for a real sporty feeling. The car is fitted with luxurious air suspension and you can raise it if you want to like that if you need to go with some speed humps or the like. Also, it's got adaptive dampers which continuously adjust to make sure you're ride is as silky smooth as possible. You can get the car with active anti-roll bars. So when you go around a corner, they work like a normal anti-roll bar. So they stop you from like rocking from side to side to keep the car nice and flat. But then they disengage when you're just going along a straight road. So that if you go over bumps, you can float up and down over them. And then when you go around a corner again, look, there you go, you're flat again. Now that's standard on the W12, though it is an option on the V8. The V8 just normally gets hollow anti-roll bars. There's variable ratio steering, which basically means that when you just turn the wheel a bit, the wheels don't turn all that much, so it makes it feel nice and sedate, not twitchy. However, the more you turn the wheel, you get an increasing amount of steering angle at the wheels, which means that it feels more sporty the more you turn the wheel. I'm not entirely sure that I've explained that very well. If you can do a better job, explain it for people in the comments below. Variable ratio steering gubbins.
There's also torque vectoring by braking. So as you turn into a corner, the brakes on the inside wheels just nibble at the discs a bit to slow down those wheels so the car rotates round to get it turning easier, which is kind of important in a car that weighs almost two and a half tons because you do need all the help you can get to get it changing direction. So let's see how this big Bentley handles a twisty road. Here we go. Oh, I'm noticing the active anti-roll bars. This doesn't leave much at all. I mean, if you push it hard, it will start to run wide, but it's amazing how tight it feels. Such a big car and an open top version at that. There really wasn't much like shake or anything through the steering wheel. That was impressive. Now, a lot of moment journalists will say that you want the VA because it's just a bit more agile. You see the W12 has more weight in its nose, so it's turning quite so sharply. But that's a little bit like saying, I wouldn't want a bigger dick because then it'd be slightly harder to get out of my trousers. It's utter nonsense. Think about how you drive a car like this. You're not gonna hoon it around like I just did on that twisty road. As a result, you're better off getting the biggest engine possible because you're gonna just be cruising around and occasionally you're gonna to wanna to wallop past people and you can wallop past people just that little bit quicker in the W12. In fact, you should always get the most powerful engine Bentley does. So if they offer it with a nuclear reactor under the bonnet, get that one instead. There's just one last thing for me to try. Will the stability control go all the way off? Yes, it will. Does that mean this car will do skids? Let's find out. <laughs> this is silly. You shouldn't be able to do this in a Bentley. Stop that. It's ridiculous. Yeah, car didn't like that either. <laughs> it complained. Dynamic ride system fault. Adapt driving style. I think that means I need to calm down. Be more Bentley. Now let's talk about the car's design. The front is instantly recognizable as a Bentley with that big Bentley grille. A huge Bentley badge to let people know that, oh yes, I'm incredibly wealthy. The car gets matrix LED headlights as standard and you've got this kind of interesting crystal effect so that they shine bright like a diamond. Now this particular car has the black pack which is 3,250 quid and the chromey bits, these bits and these bits, are then in black. So having the black around the headlamps is kind of a bit like eyeliner. It makes this car look a bit like a goth. Down the side this car has this really cool strong crease which runs all the way along here then it kind of blends into this bit here really really distinctive now you can get the car with 17 different standard colors though there's only seven available for the v8 though like i said they're standard colors it's bentley if you want them to paint it whatever color you want they'll do it for you as long as you give them the right amount of money being the v8 you get the badge there saying v8 if you have the w12 it actually has a 12 in that vent as standard you get 20 inch alloy wheels on the v8 21s on the w12 though these are the upgraded 22s here at the back, you've got some LED tail lights and they're surrounded by that crystal effect like at the front. So they too, blood diamond. The V8 model has twin exhaust pipes either side and they're actually designed to look like an eight. Can you see it? Can you see it? Bentley hopes that you can. The W12 has one single huge oval exhaust pipe at each side. Being a convertible, obviously a key feature of this car is its folding fabric roof. Now Bentley says you can put it up in just 19 seconds. So let's see if that's true. Let's time it. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Apparently you can do this when you're driving at speeds of up to 30 miles an hour. It's a full piece design, the roof, so it's nice and insulated. Should be as insulated as the coupe, really. It's doing its thing. You can get it in lots of different colors. You can even get it in a tweed color. Come on. There we go, all done. Needless to say, the inside of this Bentley is absolutely fabulous. It's a really luxurious place to sit. There's so much leather everywhere. In fact, I think there's a whole abattoir's worth of cams in here. Poor cams. Now, if you have wood veneers, the actual amount of wood is 10 metres squared, which is a big area of wood, although this hasn't got wood. This has got the carbon fibre, and I quite like it. It feels more sporty, a bit more modern. I also like the metal strip that just runs around the cabin like that. It's really cool. In fact, there's lots of metal trim everywhere, really. It's all expensive feeling. There's lots of knurling here, here, and on the dials, and there's classic Bentley traits like this. Look, the organ stops, which I'm no doubt about to break. 
the air vents to stop the air coming in and out. There's quilting on the seats on this particular car. And you can choose how you want it, really. If you go for the Munina program, you can just basically design the interior as you want it with lots of different materials, colours and what have you. Now, it's supposed to be a four-seat, so like I said at the very beginning, it's the fastest four-seater convertible in the world. So let me get into the back and see what it's like, really, as a four-seater. Oh, yeah, it's going to be like the coupe, which means not great. Oh, look, so that was my driving position. Hello, I'm in the back of a Bentley and I'm not as comfortable as I should be. Actually, <laughs> because you've got the fabric roof, it's not so bad that I've got no headroom. Knee room is very tight though. When you're in the Bentley, you should always feel like it's like super luxurious, comforting experience. But quite frankly, this is a bit more like medieval torture. Even though it is very plush and posh medieval torture, it's still medieval torture nonetheless. I think you'll be fine if you're a child or of child size, or you've got no legs, it'd be okay. But really you won't want to go too far in the back of this, regardless of how beautifully trimmed it is. Now let's talk about the boot, and oh dear, my hands are full. Yeah, the classic drink of Bentley drivers, Red Bull. Should have been champagne really, but there you go. Look, hands free opening, which is handy. Yay, look, I didn't have to put these down. And you might be thinking, yeah, it'd be better off if I had a pair of huge suitcases, but they wouldn't fit in this boot, as you can see. It's a rather small boot. You can't fit much in it. It's 235 litres. It's smaller than the coupe's boot, which has 360 litres, which isn't actually huge in itself. Reason being, folding roof mechanism does eat into space. There are a few practical items here, though. Look, you've got some tie-down points there. You've got a 12-volt socket there. There's some type sealant stuff under there oh god everything's falling around now because this has a weird kind of like contour shape to it if you've got a scuff plate there so you don't scratch stuff if you do bother to put things in the boot and get them in and out it all feels expensively lined with nice plush carpet now the carpet isn't quite as plush as that on a rolls royce phantom anyway i'm gonna shut this boot now and move on to five annoying things about this bentley continental gt convertible the Bentley Continental GT is a pretty heavy car to start with, but this convertible is even heavier. Because of the roof mechanism and the fact that Bentley's had to fit lots of extra bracing to make up the fact that there isn't a fixed metal roof on the car, so it doesn't wobble about too much, the result is an extra 170 kilos in weight. So the W12 weighs 2,414 kilos, and this V8, 2,335 kilos. It's obviously more expensive being the uh, convertible as well. 17 grand more than the coupe. Not that that really matters to a Bentley buyer. This car has Apple CarPlay with its infotainment system, but there is no Android Auto, so I had to connect my Samsung Galaxy S10 via just normal Bluetooth, and I didn't have full functionality, which is annoying. Now, I know that Bentley owners can afford to have both kinds of phones, but really, do they want to carry around two phones? They might want something like a Samsung Galaxy Note, just, you know, just not an Apple product, and they can't. It's a load of bollocks, really. I mean, not even BMW is pulling this nonsense anymore. Come on, Bentley. What is this horrible thing here? Look at this, stuck on nasty, it's horrid. What is this? Yeah, I know it's a parking sensor, but why does it look so horrible? They could have done a better job. Come on. Ah. It's a bit annoying that if you don't want to get buffeted when you're driving, you have to fit this wind deflector. I've never fitted it before and I refuse to look at the instructions. It should be intuitive, right? Yeah. Mm. Uh, 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 oh. <laughs> Don't want to scuff the leather. Come on, get in the hole. Um, yeah. One hour later. Uh, uh, oh, uh. Two hours later. There's probably a way. I'm almost there. Tomorrow. I'm now looking at the instructions. Oh, it does help. Many months later. No. Oh. It's actually quite easy if you look at the instructions. Thing is though, look at that. It's just not in keeping with the rest of the car. And really, Bentley should send you a man along to fit it for you so you don't have to do it yourself. Come on. This car comes with a 20 gallon fuel tank, which is pretty large. Trouble is though, it's quite a thirsty vehicle. You'd be lucky to average around 22 miles per gallon, regardless of which engine you go for or how you drive. And that means that you've got a maximum range of around 460 miles between fill-ups, which means if you want to drive to the coast and back, you are at some point probably going to have to fill up with fuel and rub shoulders with just 
plebs. It's a bit annoying that the tank wasn't a bit larger so it could go further, maybe 600 miles, and that way you wouldn't have to fill up and you could just get your staff to do it when you return home. It's not all negative though. Here's five good things about this car. The air suspension system has three chambers and as a result, you have 60% more air volume in there than the air suspension on the old Bentley Continental GT convertible for an even more pillowy ride. So you can enjoy having the top down even when it's cold, as well as a heated seat, you have heated armrests and a nice little bit of hot air blown out of there to keep your neck warm. If you think that having a big digital display in the centre of your dash is not very Bentley-like, don't worry, for £4,800 you can get this rotating screen, so at the press of a button I can get rid of that and see some lovely, more old-fashioned dials. Now this unit has 40 different moving components in it, which might worry a little bit about reliability, but the tolerance is very high, apparently 0.5 of a millimetre, and if you look, this weave lines up exactly. Now if you don't like that, you can just get rid of it all and just have it pure like this, there we go, lovely. Though, wait a minute, the weave doesn't quite match up this time. Mm, is that within 0.5 of a millimeter? I'm not sure, Let, let's move on. A lot of cars have puddle lighting so that when you open the door, it illuminates on the floor, a bit of branding for the car, but very few look as cool as the Bentley one. Now it's a bit light today so you can't see it, but you can just here, if I shut the door on the sill, look at that lovely bit of Bentley lighting. Oh, luxury. If you buy this car, you get some serious bragging rights to really bore your friends with. For instance, did you know that this car has 310,675 individual stitches in the interior? And if you were to lay out all the thread, it would stretch for 2.8 kilometers. Now, each of these cars takes 100 hours to build, and 970 people are involved in the build process. Then there's the electrical system, which is quite extensive. So there's 2,300 individual circuits in this car, and eight kilometers of wiring. And then there's the 92 individual ECUs fitted to the car to control all the technology, with over 100 million lines of software code written, which is 15 times more than you get in a Boeing 787 Dreamliner. Whew, yes, I'm all blanked out now. Ugh. The infotainment system on this car is taken from the Porsche Panamera, and it's generally pretty nice to use. One thing that is a bit annoying is that some of the icons are a bit fiddly, and so hard to hit while you're driving. You can see they're quite small. You can do things like control the climate control through there as well, though thankfully you do have dials down here which are much easier to use while you're driving. And the sat-nav is pretty good, and the screen reasonably responsive. It's okay this, it's not my favourite system. I do think that the BMW iDrive is better. What I do really like though is the digital driver's display which I think is more taken from an Audi. Audi, Porsche, all part of the same group. I like the way that the digital dials actually look like old-fashioned clocks, but you have so much more functionality so you can look at like data, you can control your phone, Bluetooth audio, get sat nav, go for a, a wider screen view if you want. You also have interesting stuff like lap times, lap statistics, and this is really nice. You can change which side the rev counter and the speedo are on if you want to, or you can just flip them over like that. How cool is that? You can get the car with a really nice heads up display. You can see it's displayed here on my chest. It shows things like the current speed and directions from the satellite navigation so you don't have to keep on looking down at the screen. There's plenty of connectivity in this car. For instance, the satellite navigation has a 4G connection. You can use it as a mobile hotspot for your mobile devices. If you need to charge those devices, then under here you have a 12 volt socket. There's two USBs as well and wireless charging. And the people in the back have a 12 volt socket and a USB as well. You can also get a night vision system. So yeah, let's have a rave in the dark. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I can't dance. Let's move on to talk about in-car practicality because storage in here is actually pretty good. So you've got two big cup holders here, plenty of room for your Factor 50, ideally if you've got wrinkly old skin like me. There's some more storage here. A big glove box which is lined with a felt-like material to increase the premium feel. There's a little storage area here as well where you can forget where you left your keys and end up looking for them for ages. Big door bins, plenty of room in those. Look there, you can fit your bottle in there. There's a couple of cup holders there as well and ice fixed angle points, which will be fine for a normal baby seat, but a larger rear facing one won't fit. Though they're probably not gonna be your kids, they'll be your grandkids if you're driving a Bentley. And a little coat hook on the back of the headrest. Now if I just pop in, I just wanna show you this one thing here. Look, when you get in, you've got a little seat belt buckler. And see your belt so you don't have to do much reaching round. And when you put that in, it goes away. Go away. See, gone. 
Being a Bentley, obviously this car comes with lots of standard equipment, but of course there's loads of options you can fit to it, such as this name sound system. So this has 18 speakers and 2,200 watts. Sounds amazing, but it does cost 6,600 pounds. Then there's a touring specification, which includes that night vision, the heads up display, and an adaptive cruise control system, 6,300 pounds. You can upgrade to the massage seats as well, 3,200 pounds, and they have, look, electrically operated headrests. Now, another thing you can fit to this car, which this one has, is the Mulliner pack. So that includes this quilting, the embossed logo there, this diamond quilting effect here, the posh pedals. You also get a metal fuel filler cap and a metal oil filler cap. Now, that pack costs £12,500. And if you add up the cost of this car, plus all the options fitted to it, the list price of this exact vehicle I've got here is £215,000, which is quite a lot of money. Now, let's see what this Bentley Continental GT convertible is like to drive as a daily. So, around town, even though it's huge, you can kind of tell where the corners of the car are. You get a good view out over the bonnet. What's not such a good view, though, is out that back window. It's not very deep. It's like a litter box, really. Side mirrors are all right, though. There's plenty of them. And I'll tell you what, it's quite a nice car to just waft around in town. Steering's light, the brakes are smooth but strong, the gearbox is pretty chilled. The suspension is absolutely brilliant to dining out bumps. Now, because it's the convertible, it's not as stiff as the coupe, so when you hit a pothole, you do get a shimmy through the steering wheel as the body flexes a bit. It's more price to pay for being able to take the roof off. Most of the time, though, you will probably have the roof up because you live in England and it just rains all the time. And it's reasonably quiet. I don't think it's quite as quiet as the coupe, maybe, but it's hardly anything in it. I think you need sand meter to tell the difference. Now, when you suddenly come out of town, look, I'm at 40 miles an hour, I'm going to floor it, gearbox responds quickly. Light me off again. That's 70. Really quick. Response to gearbox as well. This thing flies. Final thing to answer, though, is what is the economy like? Well, this one's averaging 24 miles per gallon which when you consider the performance, and how heavy it is, is surprisingly good. Maybe you won't have to fill up as often as I thought you might. So then, what's my final verdict on the Bentley Continental GT Convertible? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, do you know what? If you've got the money, just go right ahead and buy it. It's an absolutely lovely car. Just make sure you get it with the W12 engine and perhaps not in this colour because it's a bit... Ooh.